five minutes to pray in the spirit the language of the holy spirit if you have not received the holy spirit i pray that during this service you will have an encounter let's begin to pray in the spirit brethren Amen. We did not pray five minutes, but Holy Spirit will thank you. We'll welcome you into the service. Take control. Come and do what only you can do. Come and visit your people again. Visit us. Express yourself through and in us. That we'll leave this place never the same. But better. Full of the presence of God. And ready to manifest God in every place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Father. 
Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Praise, fragrance. Thank you. This morning, we'll be looking at the topic, the manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord. I, I, I don't know where to start, but in the morning, I think God just took control. So I'm going to let him, I don't want to be stereotyped. I have a note. I was able to be guided by the Spirit of God to take what I needed from the notes. But every other thing I said was under unction. Okay. So if you were at the first service, expect to hear another unction from God because I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to speak through me. The first passage we're going to take this morning, again, will be um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 13. We'll quickly read it. This scripture is an exposition of what the Spirit of God does in us. So let's listen as I read. It says, How be it will speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7, it says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Praise the Lord. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had, he, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Praise the Lord. He said, but as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Do you love God? Do you love God? God has prepared something for you and you must manifest it. Amen. Let's go to verse 10. He said, but God has revealed them unto us. By what? His spirit. And that spirit here is a capital letter. And that's the spirit we are going to be talking about today. It says, for the spirit, that same spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. And verse 11 says, for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man? I'm sure most times you already know yourself. That's what that part is saying. You already know yourself. Your spirit, your own personal spirit tells you who you are, where you are operating from. Okay? And it says, which is in him. Your own spirit in you can tell you who you are. He said, but even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. He says, now we have received not the spirit of of the world that's a small s is a small spirit but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of god final verse it says which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the holy ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual praise the lord in the things of the spirit brethren your understanding is nothing. You are no longer supposed to operate in your own realm by your personal spirit or understanding. There is a new order. When Jesus was leaving, he told his disciples, I'm going to the Father. I will send you what? Another spirit. And he told us what the spirit is going to do. Can we read um, John 14, 26? John 14, 26, quickly. Another spirit. Amen. He calls it the spirit. They come, but the comforter, which is the, is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. That's the other spirit. Today in Sunday school, we talked about the Holy Spirit. I told them how when I knew that the topic was the Holy Spirit and that God was preparing a message on the Holy Spirit, I was confused. I was about to say, okay, if they've had so much of the Holy Spirit, why don't I change and get another message? But God said, no, tell the people about the presence, the very manifestation of his presence. Praise the Lord. God is taking us to a better realm of understanding who he is. And we can't do that in our flesh, in our understanding, 
That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 6, 6 to 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 13 just told us. Your own spirit will understand you. But you need a greater spirit of God, which Jesus promised when he was going to understand the things of God, to know God. Praise the Lord. So this morning, we are going to read a story about the journey to Emmaus. And that will be a bit of exposition on telling us how we must learn to understand how God Manifest his presence. Can we go to Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 35? It's a long read. I'm going to employ my sisters against AAP, uh, NG Greater, and our uh, Dickiness um, Rosita to help me read the first 10 verse and also. Uh, praise the Lord. NG Greater, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke 24, verse 13 to the end. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they were communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another? as you walk and are sad. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which we are early at the sepulchre. Praise the Lord. Sister Rose. Thank you. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that they would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they arose that very hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Praise Hallelujah. Thank you, my sisters. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Very, very wonderful story. I'm sure we've all read that story over and over again. It's an Easter story. And most times when we read it, we never really did look closely at what God was trying to teach us. Praise God. And maybe we have, but let's take a second look today. Somewhere in the, um, in the first part of this um, verse 13, it said that in New, Translation, New Living Translation, translation he said god kept them from recognizing him two followers of jesus they have been with jesus like you and i from when probably he was born some were even older than him and the events of his living dying and rising or rising up had been told to them right they knew they were his followers 
And when he came right next to them, they couldn't recognize him. Praise the Lord. Their spirit was shut out from the events because of the happenstance at that moment. What was happening at that time? It was three days after. On the third day, Jesus had risen and had appeared to some other followers. And I told them, I've risen. I'll be coming again. And they saw him go, right? And these men were now on the streets, lamenting, unhappy. And Jesus himself, in the spirit form, manifested and walked with them. And he spoke to them, but they did not know him. And when Jesus was going, like we read in John um, 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 16, 24 now, and he said that he was going to send us another comforter. He told them the same thing. Just like he told us. Some of us are speaking in tongues. Some of us are not. Some of us did have that spirit. Did you hear them when they said they had that spirit burning in their hearts when he spoke? That's the Holy Ghost. Is inside of you. He wants to manifest in you. He wants you to recognize him. He wants to speak to you. He wants to tell you of things to come. And when they walked with Jesus on the road to Emmaus, Jesus told them the same story. Even on telling them those stories that of old it was said, they kept complaining. This man came. They said he will die. He died. After he died, they said he has risen. The leaders of this nation have killed him. And now they say he's risen. We don't understand what is going on. Is that often what we do? God is telling you something. You are engrossed in your own world of complaints. You are shutting your ears, your spiritual ears, from hearing from that inner witness that is telling you what to do. They didn't recognize Jesus just after three days. Some of us, I'm sure, may it not be our portion in Jesus name that when we walk out of this service something is going to make you want to forget what you heard today I pray that you will resist the temptation you will resist the temptation and tell yourself I have the spirit of God in me Holy Ghost tell me what to do give me counsel and he will listen to you this season is the season of the manifestation of the Spirit. If only we can just tap into it. There's a lot of revelation being released. But I tell you, brethren, the only one that will appeal to you is the one that God gives to you. You can't run with another man's vision. No. You will get tired. But I swear, I tell you by the word of God today, that when you hear personally from God you can't but believe and in the last few weeks or so God has been dealing with me in a lot of ways I have so many conflicting opinions on what to do what to say how to do it I groan I cry and say God talk to me I'm tired of hearing people speak to my life I want to hear you firsthand I'm tired of people telling me they got a miracle. Instant ears were opened. Eyes could see. They could conceive. God, I want to experience you firsthand. It's a honest quest for revelation. A honest quest and hunger that only the Holy Spirit can feel. That's the position the church should be at all times. God is yearning to speak to us. Are we ready to listen? I wrote in my notes, I said, they were talkatives. He just asked them one question. So why are you so troubled? They spoke, they went back, narrated. Even when he was talking, they were not still listening. Do you know their saving grace? As they walked along, they got to their destination. And Jesus wanted to say, okay, oh, complainant, I'm going, eh? take care. They said, no. They felt comforted by those words, I'm sure. He reminded them of something. Did you hear what they said later? He did burn in our hearts. That there was something about this man that was talking to us. And they invited him and said, mm, I bet, just come. Come into our house and join us in the supper. 
Let's go take some supper together. And Jesus gladly followed them. For yet another encounter. God always gives us opportunities to hear him. May we not miss those opportunities in the name of Jesus. And when they got into the house, it was time to break bread. The moment of truth. Most of us as believers, we have not gotten the understanding of the power of what Jesus did on the cross. The body and the blood. And as it is pattern of Jesus to do, every time he wanted to share with his disciples, what does he do? He will take the bread. He will what? Give thanks. And then he will do what? He will break it. And then he will give. When he did that, they recognized him. They said, wow, this is Jesus. He's with us and we never knew. And what happened? He disappeared. Because it was not time for them to manifest, for him to have manifest. That was not his second coming. Okay? All they are thinking was this Messiah has gone. He's coming back with many army to come and fight these our enemies. These kings are killed him. That was all they were waiting for. Despite he had told them that that's not how I'm going to manifest. He told them, my manifestation is not to come and conquer this earthly kingdom. My manifestation is to give into you my kingdom for you to manifest to the world. They didn't believe him. So when he broke bread with them, they were glad. Brethren, I drew another inference in that scripture. A new dimension of me understanding that the body and the blood of Jesus Christ can liberate you. It can open your eyes. Don't play with the communion. As a family or as an individual, break bread. Look, this journey is urgent now than it was yesterday. There is an urgency in the spirit for you to know God for yourself. Because I, I, I don't know, I, should I say it? As it is in my heart. The days of trials have not yet come. Where you will have to pay something to get something. I don't know what that means. It just came in. And then you will need to compromise your faith. That's when you know you need the spirit of God. To be ready for those times. It has been spoken in the scripture. Do you understand? That mothers, fathers will betray children. Children will betray. And is it not happening? I saw a clip on online. The guy said they sold his friend's head for 20,000 naira. I was amazed. That night I went. You say this, man, sister, men, I can cry. Yes. Call me a weeping prophet. No problem. I cried. I said 20,000 naira. They killed the man. His friend. They told him he needed money, uh, that head to get money ritual done. And he took his own friend. Lured him to the place. He was slaughtered. And they gave him 20,000. And he went. That is the time we are in. That might be you. God forbid. That a friend wants to lure. You need the counsel of God. To say, where is he taking me to? Another gang of thieves were caught recently. I saw it on Instagram. And a young man was telling the story how a friend of his told him that his master had just made seven million. And the money was in the house. And that they should go and rob on the 16th of December. And when they got there, lo and behold, there was no money. And the boy that revealed that secret to them is in living in that same house. And when the case came out, the boy said he doesn't know them. They are lying on his head. Can't you see? If I'm the one, will I be in the house? Some of us are going to be in situations where you will be betrayed if you are not careful. But with the spirit of the living God that Christ has deposited by his death and his resurrection. He said it will come and it has come. The manifestation started in the upper room when he visited his disciples 
and they began to speak in tongues. I said this morning, the same spirit in that did you or any man of God is inside of you is your level of understanding. He said the spirit of God is inside of us and it's the inspiration of God that gives it understanding. Praise the Lord. I want us to go home today and have a new paradigm, a new hunger, a new thirst for the things that the spirit so expressly wants to do through and in us. Let's read another a verse of scripture where he was talking about Jesus. Isaiah is it chapter 11 verse 1 to 4 or 5. Let's read it quickly so we round up. I hope I am gaining, God is gaining expression with his word in your heart and making something born within a hunger to know him. It says here and there shall come forth from the rod of Jesse which is Jesus and a branch shall grow out. That is Jesus. Verse 2. Praise the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This spirit of the Lord that we are talking about. This is the spirit of the Lord. When it rests upon you. It rested upon David at one time. He rested upon Daniel. He gave him an excellent spirit. He rested upon Gideon. He rested upon Samson and gave him the spirit of strength and of might he rested upon a lot of our old patriarchs and they did wonderful things with it what are you doing with the spirit of god inside of you are you making a demand on the holy ghost now some of them rose and gave these prophecies what are you seeing concerning your nation your family your workplace when do you know it's time to zero out from a certain transaction? When do you know? How do you know? By this spirit. The spirit of the Lord that he has sent to rest upon you. And when he said that, he said, that spirit will rest upon you. Also the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is simply knowing. You know. Understanding is unraveling the how. There are many things you need to know. Even secular things. Do you remember Daniel? They said his spirit was ten times more. That is the spirit the Bible is talking about. The excellent spirit. Praise the Lord. It says the spirit of counsel and might. Counsel is needed in our time. There are some people, there are some places you should not go anymore, brethren. You should not be found there. You should not even go there. If you have the spirit of counsel, it will tell you, no, it's not time. Don't be there. That party is not for you. That gathering is not your gathering. That friendship is over. Hallelujah. It says the spirit of what? Knowledge and the fear of God. In our time today, knowledge and understanding is lacking. People do not fear God anymore. We often live our life to chance. To the things that we perceive are right for us. Not consulting with the only wise one. Who can give direction. For purpose and destiny. Praise the Lord. Brethren let's rise up this morning. Let's ask God to help us. Holy Spirit help me. He lives in you. Well, you may not be speaking in tongues yet, but he says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you, the spirit of God will quicken your mortal bodies. I've heard testimonies of people who in their living room or their bedroom or bathroom, when they were taking their bath, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to speak with new tongues. Desire such revelations today. Desire such manifestations today. And come back to church and give us testimony. People are saying they, they, they speak no word of knowledge. And people will come, yes, it's me. I received my healing. God wants to manifest that in the church, this church, this, this place here. Are you the instrument God is going to use? It determines on how you leave yourself open for God. Hallelujah. I have no power. Sing it to Jesus. 
Tell him you are helpless without him. I have no power of my own. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I look up to you. Help me, oh, I have no power of my own. Help of the helpless, we thank you. May indeed the entrance of your word bring light and understanding to our hearts today. Father, let a new fresh hunger and thirst for the spirit of the living God upon our lives fall upon the church today. May this week mark a turning for new beginnings concerning the things that you have said that we will do with the spirit of God in our lives. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. thank you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We will never take you for granted. Reveal yourself to us. Manifest through us. For us. In us. Unto the world that you have called us. Thank you, Father, Lord God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.